We're talking about some Lions news today. We're going to get into the aspirations of Panay Sewell. Should the Detroit Lions sign a free agent defensive tackle? Talk about the former Lions getting suspended. That's what we're getting into for Friday's video. But before we get into this video, if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now. Easy to do so. It helps the channel out. And guess what? We get this thing going. No doubt about it, we talk about a player like Panay Sewell. He should definitely be having aspirations of being an all-pro, and that's what it comes to when it comes to probably Detroit doing an article here. The guy is, to me, one of the best right tackles in all of football. Probably should have been all-pro last year, if you ask me. So year three, there's absolutely no doubt about it. This man should be all-pro right tackle, and the foundation for this offensive line is definitely with him now. He is just a phenomenal player for this offensive line. He's a player that could play left tackle as well, and at some point you, you do think that when Taylor Decker does leave, he'll get pushed to the left side, but for this up-and-coming year, absolutely he should be a first-team all-pro right tackle. He absolutely should be a name that NFL, ESPN, Sports Center, PFF, everybody talks about as one of the most elite players on the offensive line. So I got a question for you right now. Do you believe Panay Sewell should be all pro in 2023? Put Y for yes and N for no. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. We go ahead and jump into Lions report here from Fansided, talking about a player that the Detroit Lions should look to sign. If you are an avid watcher of my channel, one position I have been talking about that the Lions could look to acquire a talent in free agency or in a trade or somehow, just for depth purposes, is the interior defensive tackle position. And I've talked about it how they can go for said players. And guess what? Sideline Report decided to talk about this player the Detroit Lions should look to get. And that is interior defensive lineman, Mr. Leonidas here from the Carolina Panthers. And Matt was a really good uh, piece to their rotation last year. For the Carolina Panthers, a good a player next to Derek Brown. He was a a player that was definitely look. He's not a starter guy. He's not the guy that you're going to rely on for every set situational down. He is just a player that's a rotational player, and I think that's what the Lions need a rotation. He did well last year with the sixty nine point one. Uh, earning the pass rushing grade there. He's consistently strong. Just, I think when it comes to him, it's more of the injury concerns. But if you're talking about a, a, a player that's just in rotation, that's not that big of a deal. He's not going to cost the Lions much of money. Last year, it was $5.9 million for the Carolina Panthers. This year, it would probably be two and a half to Three million, if you ask me. Lions got plenty of money to do that, and it does shore up the offensive, or sorry, the defensive line next to Ali McNeil, Isaiah Bugs, John Kaminsky, Joshua Pascal, all the players that the Lions have there. And you know, you could have him as a player that you can rely on that can help out in the middle. He's not bad when it comes to stopping the run. He's a little bit better in uh, quarterback pass rushing. I think that's the Lions' needs. I think we we look at some of the Lions' run stuffers. Joshua Pascal and Lee McNeil kind of fill that role of players that can stop the runs. We need a we need players a little more of Isaiah Bugs in there and a John Kaminsky. I think if if they signed 
uh, Matt Leonidas. I think that would be a fine signing for the Detroit Lions. There's other players the Lions could look at. We've talked about Ndamukong Sue coming back to the D. That's not going to happen anytime soon. That would be a late in the season. There's definitely other players that the Lions could look at when it comes to the 53-man roster, when other teams start to cut players, they could wait right there for getting another player to address on the defensive line. So the Lions have they have plenty of options, and they really don't need to do anything at this moment right now because if you're looking at a veteran, generally veterans are good to go. They know how to get their bodies in shape, and you can add them halfway through training camp or add them when teams decide to let them go, and they already performed a lot of time in other teams' training camps, so it's not like they're out of shape. They just need to know the playbook a little bit. So I got a question for you. Should the Detroit Lions look to sign Matt Leonidas? In the comment section, put S for sign or P for pass. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, we're going to go to another Pride of Detroit article. Just go ahead and read it here. But it's the Lions got to make a big decision on defensive tackle Levi and Muzurikin. That kind of filters into what we just talked about. I personally believe you cannot rely on him this season at all. My expectations, he's probably going to get released with an injury settlement. But of course, we do got to give him an opportunity to see if he can do anything coming into training camp. I think to cut him right now would be a little bit overdoing it. It's not like you need to do that right now. Give him an opportunity to see if he can come back. But make no mistake about it, if he's still doing the same thing in the first week of the training camp, I do believe it's really important for the Detroit Lions to go ahead and just cut ties with Levi on Wuzurike. I do. The reason for that is you know he's not going to be there for the regular season. If now in year three, it's still not getting better after his spine fusion. Okay. And at that point, you can release him and find a guy, anyone, and add to the roster to see if they can at least make the roster. You'll give someone else an opportunity for that roster spot. And I think that's really important for the Detroit Lions just just for a competitive standpoint. So they're talking about expectations here. My expectations is nilch and nothing. The Lions do have to make a big decision. And I think cutting ties ultimately was going to happen. But wait a week after training camp just to see if there is any sort of progress. Because you did draft him in the second round. You did have high expectations for him. So one final chance, in my opinion, is not going to be something that's too bad for sure. It's really not. And if you're watching the show yesterday, you've known that the Detroit Lions' former players have been suspended as well. Demetrius Taylor has been suspended, and he was the undrafted rookie we had a couple of years ago, and he just, he was, he's not on the team anyways, he was actually cut earlier this year, and Barry as well was suspended uh, for the Detroit Lions, who they're not on the team, so the NFL has been going hardcore with these suspensions due to the gambling probe that has taken place here. In all honesty, I think the NFL has definitely fumbled the ball on this one. No one really knows the exact rules, and I think that's an issue. So you're going to suspend these players generally not no one knows the rules. Maybe they should really clarify this gambling rule before they start suspending all sorts of players throughout the NFL, not just the Detroit Lions. Because even for me, it's questionable. Like, so you're at a hotel and you gambled on a college game and they deserve a six-game suspension for something like that? Like, I I wouldn't even know that rule. I, I know that you can't gamble on NFL games, but, you know, talking about a college game at a hotel... It kind of seems a little bit weak, if you ask me, but I agree that 
they shouldn't be gambling on NFL games. That's absolutely something that shouldn't take place. If you're doing that, that's probably a net negative. But again, the NFL is doing all this gambling advertisement. They're doing all the casino gambling. And I mean, we're seeing it all over. You see it on my ads. You see it where we're due. So the NFL is partnering with these gambling. So they're kind of shooting themselves in the foot. Let's be honest here with that. So maybe they should kind of look in the mirror a little bit and stop this, you know, and clarify it and kind of realize that they're the kind of ones that that did this. Let's be honest here. They're the ones that kind of did this to themselves. You're you're sponsoring all these these, uh, gambling sites and casinos and this gambling here and gambling there. We've seen on ads everywhere. So you're going to get mad and suspend the players for something that you're promoting. It seems a little bit off if you ask me, it seems a little bit, a little bit um, ignorant, but that's just me and how I'm looking at it, folks, from a an outside perspective. So, you know, that's the NFL. They tend to do a lot of dumb things. It is what it is. But, folks, we're dropping videos every single day, Monday through Sunday. When the NFL season, the regular season, take place, we do Sundays then. Live shows, post-game shows, post-game videos. Right now it's the off-season, so I'm not doing it. Kind of pointless. Uh, We also have the live shows on Thursday, 4 p.m. Eastern time. Make sure you hit that notification bell. It's very important so you don't miss out on the latest Lions News and Rumors. You don't miss out on something of breaking news that happens. You don't miss out on epic content. So just go ahead and do that. And that definitely helps out. Training camp is coming up here very shortly, right down the road. I'll be at Lions Training Camp. Make sure you come and hang out. Also, when we're doing the away games for the Detroit Lions, we'll be at the Soaring Eagle Casino for away games. Uh, We'll do play-by-play, Herman Moore and myself. It's going to be freaking epic. With that said, folks, adios.